Welcome to the Light Home Sustainable Design podcast series. We talk with the architects and builders about green design and homes that really suit the way we love to live. Well, I'm here today to talk with Damien Tammer, who's a final year architecture student and one of the founders of a business called Urban Huts. He founded this business with his uh, partner, a carpenter, Simon Cowley. So we're going to find all about Urban Huts today with Damien. So Damien, just describe what is an Urban Hut? Uh, an Urban Hut is uh, a small hut or a pod. We don't like to use the term pod. We're sort of um, trying to make them more livable. So it's, um, yeah, basically going back to the old type of hut with somewhere like a retreat or, um, you know, uh, an escape somewhere where it's, it's not really, you're not living in it permanently, but it's, it's a good option. Okay, so when you say not living in it permanently, is it like um, might I have it in my backyard or might I have it on a country bit of acreage or where would I use it? Yeah, either of those. Um, we're sort of thinking more along the lines of with the building codes and whatever, you can't have a permanent dwelling, you know, like this type of hut just dropped in on your backyard. It's got to be transportable. Um, so our way around that is by keeping them transportable. So, you, yeah, you explain to the council that they can be moved. <laughs> and I can hear that uh, banging in the background. So just for listeners, yeah, I should explain, what... you've got the painters in, haven't you, Damien? Yeah, that's right. It's not one of our urban huts being built. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, so I suppose the idea was more of a, a small type of dwelling, um, but something that, you know, it, it could be used as a granny flat, but we do have to be careful with the building codes. Right. So if you were, you know, really trying to define the market for urban huts, who is the ideal person? What's the ideal situation where these are going to be used? Yeah, probably, um, you know, just a, a family, I suppose, with kids who would like either a studio or a parent's retreat or uh, a teenager's retreat. Uh, granny flat was probably the first type of thing we were looking at, but we found that it's actually difficult getting those through council all around Australia. The, the, the codes vary from state to state. So, um, as I said, we're just sort of being conscious of calling them a granny flat or a micro home. Uh, micro home's probably a better term. Okay. Um, so, it's, uh, yeah, this, this, it's the rules and the codes that are a little bit sort of limiting. And is the, is the idea there with the business to actually be able to ship these all across Australia? Is that, is that the plan? Yeah, yeah. So they'd be prefabbed or custom built. Mm -hmm. And because of they have to be transportable, we would lift them into place. So they'd come aside on the back of a truck and then they'd be craned over the, the existing dwelling or down the side, wherever, you know, whatever's easiest, and dropped onto some footings and then services connected up. And away you go. So when you say dropped onto some footings, so these are like, um, I guess, piers coming out of the uh, ground. So these aren't going to go on a slab or anything. They're just going to go on to some elevated piers. Is that, am I, have got that right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. Sort of imagining, you know, stumps up to about 600 high or so. Okay. 600, probably 900 maximum, just to, to again, keep with the building codes. And so will you be producing these in a factory environment, I guess, um, in order to then ship them around the country? Eventually, we'd like to get to that. Okay. Uh, at this stage, it's just yeah, just being done on a block of land. Mm -hmm. uh, Simon's got a block of land with a shed, which um, yeah, he's already built one there and sold one. Uh, so that's as far as we've got so far. But yeah, that's that's how it would happen. Okay. And then if, if it does take off, then yeah, we see them being done, mass produced. Okay. And um, what um, sort of design and construction constraints does uh, building in a factory pose for you? Um, well, I suppose we'd like to keep them sort of custom built. We want to keep nice finishes and that's, you know, there is quite a few of these type of things around. Yep. So, in, com in comparison, what's different about yours? Um, well, Other than it just looks nicer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we think it does look nicer. Um, well, yeah, the materials we're looking at using are more environmentally sustainable. In what we're way? At, Can you explain uh, that to us in more detail? Yeah, we're looking at using sandwich panel. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's quite a few of those at the moment. There's, yeah, Kingspan. The other one we're looking at was in Biotech, uh -huh. which is, uh, it has some material on either side, and basically it's around either 75 mil or 100 mil thick, and on the outside is a hard rendered surface. In the, in the centre of the sandwich panel is a foam, which acts as a really good insulator, uh -huh. and then on uh -huh. the inside is a thin layer of ply, which we would just keep as ply and then just coat it with, um, with some clear coat so it really shows off the timber. And so just to so, be really... 
very clear about that for people. So what, what are the specific sustainability elements of that product? Is it because it contributes um, so, uh, you know, to the thermal efficiency of the building or is it something else? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. They're really good insulating panels mm-hmm. uh, and you can use them on the floor and on the, the roof as well. Um, and it also, you know, it, it keeps it all sort of thin because it's only just one um, surface that you're looking at instead of having walls and then, you know, then cladding and, and all that sort of thing. Or same with the roof, instead of having a roof structure and then having some insulation and then having a ceiling and insulation, you've just got it all in one product. So I guess that so, makes it faster for you to put together, doesn't it? Because you've got less components, if you like, in a wall structure and in a roof structure. Is that right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's right. And it keeps it all um, thinner, if you like. So instead of having thicker walls to achieve the same thermal rating, we can keep it all, it's more efficient, basically, um, both thermally and in size. Right. So you get more footprint for the for the wall, I guess. Pretty much, yeah. Which And also, yeah, that comes back to the, the transportability because there's limits to what you can transport. Uh, I think it's three and a half metres wide. Anything above that, you've got to have a pilot vehicle. So we're, you know, we're just sort of keeping that in mind as well. And so are you uh, working within that three and a half metre wide envelope then? Yes, we are. And one of the designs we've got is um, it's modular, so they join together. Okay, so they join together on top or join together sort of on the horizontal plane? On the horizontal, yeah. We've got one that we've sort of um, considered going up, um, but at this stage, yeah, we haven't totally resolved that one, so it's, yeah, it's more so in the horizontal. Okay. And so what about the embodied energy, for example, of those kind of products that you're considering? Um, they're all local products. Uh, the embodied energy of the complete hut, if it was to go, if we were to manufacture it here in, in Brisbane, which is where I am, um, and then we had to take it up to the mines in Northern Territory, that probably would be something we'd need to consider, whether it's worthwhile actually building them up there in situ rather than shipping them all the way. Um, so, yeah, that's a good point. Um, we would try and keep most of the materials sustainable, as I said. Um, you know, we are trying to be as environmentally friendly as we possibly can so, and, and also keep everything small. Yes. So just on that point, just, you know, for, for listeners who are, who are interested, what kind of um, tools would you use in order to try and investigate the sustainability of a building product before you decided to use it? Um, we probably have to use the building code, which the, the one that I know about, which is say like the section J in the building code mm-hmm. to do with the ratings and products um, and the design. Um, so windows being a certain size to achieve a certain thermal rating. Would, you, in, pr- would you investigate the product's properties though um, using a tool like Eco Specifier or something like that? Because I mean, yes. I, I understand about the code and, and as it relates to the design, but in relation to, for example, the life cycle analysis of a product or the embodied energy of a product, is Eco Specifier or something similar something that you might use to investigate that? Yeah, we probably would. Um, Green Star would be another one. I'm not sure where we would fit in with Green Star because, as far as I know, Green Star ratings apply to offices at the moment and residential. So I'm not sure if if our huts would fit into that. But, yeah, that's something we'll definitely look at. Uh Uh-huh. And so what part does your partner, the carpentry side of the equation, what part does he play in this um, design evolution process? Well, it was his idea to start with, Mm -hmm. the whole thing. So, And he's actually built one, as I said before, and he was living in one up on the Sunshine Coast. He actually just sold it yesterday. Uh, (laughs) So, um, yeah, it was his idea more to do with the detailing. Uh, as you probably notice on, if you see on our website, we've got some um, some shots up there just with the the rafters and it's a bit of a sort of a, a Japanese type of feel, I suppose. It's um, yeah, just something a little bit different. So he's probably more to do with the craft and the detailing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so we've just sort of come together. We both actually sat there together and designed some of these. So which was good working with a carpenter. Did so, that change? Did working with a carpenter change uh, what you might have done? Do you think, as an architect, or a, yeah, almost I think so. architect? <laughs> almost, yeah, that's it. Um, I'm pretty sure it did because we were both, you know, working together, and he's more in tune with what's um, what's able to be constructed. So where I was having ideas, he'd say, "Well, yeah, that's good, but we can't actually do that. This would be a better way to do it." Um, so it was good. I think it really worked well together uh, to sit there and nut it out. Mm-hmm. So and also just with module sizes of, of the panels and all that sort of thing and, and joints and, and construction details. So yeah, we're we're pretty happy with the way they've come up. 
Okay, very good. And um, uh, finally, uh, you know, what's next in terms of um, what's on the drawing board? What are you developing as the, your very next thing? Uh, probably marketing is our next step. At the moment, we've got about four or five different huts, and one of them, as I was saying, is, a, is the modular type, which can be added on, and we've got a corner unit there. So that, um, that opens up the possibilities quite a bit. Um, so really, we just want to push them now and, yeah, sort of get them out there and, and probably have a, like a showcase type of display unit where people can actually come and see the finishes. And so when people sit down, I guess, to compare various opportunities that they might have and if they were looking for, um, you know, if they wanted to have a similar structure on a particular, you know, block of land or in their backyard or whatever, um, how would your urban hut compare um, from a cost perspective to getting it just stick built on site? Yeah, it will be a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What, what, what is the cost driver there? Um, well, there's a quite, as I said before, there's quite a few of these huts around, but they're really charging very, very high prices for them. Um, so we're just trying to keep them simple. And also the sandwich panel, I think, will help in that respect because we've just got really just one um, skin, if you like. Um, so you've and, streamlined a lot of trades there. Yeah, we have, yeah. And you know, we're just trying to keep them small and simple. So we're not going over. Well, we're not saying that, you know, these things will be your home. Some of the ones that we've seen out there, they can be quite big. You know, they can, you could probably live in them with a family. But we're just trying to sort of keep them down to a, a smaller size. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to be competitive in, you know, in regard to the budget. All right. Well, very best of luck, Damien and the um, missing carpentry partner, Simon. Thanks very much, Amanda. Thank you.